Hey there, Matthew Morris Guy. I'm creating a video today to talk about how escrow accounts work. Trust me when I tell you this is such a common question. If it's a question you have and you're confused at all, please rest assured, tons and tons of people have this same question. Even when I explain it, I'm trying to do my best to explain it um, the best way I know how. It's, it's a hard concept to kind of understand. So if you've got questions about this, hopefully the video helps. If not, please give me a call. But this is how escrow accounts work. Now, first and foremost, an escrow account is basically a savings account held by the mortgage company to pay your property taxes, your insurance, and your mortgage insurance. And when I say the first insurance, I'm talking about hazard insurance, homeowners insurance. So the mortgage company is holding a bunch of your money, an escrow account, and then twice a year, they're paying taxes to the county. Once a year, they're paying a one year homeowner's insurance bill to the homeowner's company, State Farm, Farmers, somebody else, and monthly, a certain percent you know, of this account is going towards your mortgage insurance if needed. So here's a quick example, a 400K purchase. This one's not working too well. All right, so you're buying a house for 400,000. You're putting 10% uh, down, so 360K loan amount. This stuff isn't as important, but just so it's a real life example. Um, the way it's gonna work is at close, the mortgage company is gonna collect a certain amount of reserves. That might be five months of property taxes. They're gonna have you pay that whole homeowner's account in advance. And later in the video, I'll tell you why and why you're not double paying. Trust me, you're never double paying, but there's gonna be a certain amount paid up front, property taxes, homeowner's insurance, and then there's gonna be a few months more of reserves. So they have reserves. And there's a couple different reasons they do that. But, but let's get into the example first. Okay, so you're gonna finance 360 at 2.99% on a 30 year loan. That is gonna make your principal interest payment 15, 16 a month. You've got $5,000 a year property taxes on this property. That works out to 417 a month. You've got 720, I'll put that up here, 5,000 a year taxes. 720 a year hazard, which is homeowner's insurance. So that's 60 a month in hazard insurance. And you've got good credit. Your mortgage insurance on this loan is $51 a month. All together, this is 2044. This is principal and interest. These three are all escrows from an escrow account. So the total of this is 528 a month. Now, you send the mortgage company 2044. 900 of that goes towards interest, 616 goes towards paying down the, the principal amount. This amount, 528, goes into an escrow account. Every single month on your statement, you're gonna see escrow balance, 1732. Escrow balance, 2356. And that's gonna show up until you've got a disbursement. And these 5,000 a year taxes, twice a year, they're gonna ask for 2,500 bucks. So let's say your escrow account three months from now has $3,700 in it. They send 2,500 to property taxes. Now it's got 1,200. I think I said 3,700 to start. And 528 a month, keeps plopping back in. 51 a month paid to mortgage insurance that goes down by that amount. But these 417 and 60 per month are basically collecting in the savings account that's yours. And then they get paid, they get dispersed to the county for taxes and to State Farm or whoever's got your hazard insurance. Now, here's where some confusion happens. And, and hopefully, I'm not the best at explaining this stuff, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna give it a good college try. People always ask me, hey, I see on my statement, when I closed this loan, when I bought the house, I paid the next property tax installment. I paid for 12 months of homeowner's insurance and they asked me to pay three months of reserves. I'm paid for 15 months. I don't know anything. Why am I paying $60 a month? I just paid them. Now here's what happens. You close a loan in June of 2020, your first payment's not due until August 1st. So June 5th, 2020, 
to 2021, that same date, that one year, that's paid. You paid it through close. Now they also collect a couple months of, of um, reserves, you know, a little buffer. So that, let's say they, they collect two months, they've got 120 in there. Your August 1st payment comes due, 60 more. September, October, November, December, January. Come next May, early May, they're gonna say, oh, we've got a June 5th homeowners due. Let's disperse. Now this account is probably gonna have 720, 780, maybe 800 bucks. They can't withhold too much. They, they, give, they have a limit on how much they can hold. And then dispersed 720 to pay 2021 to 2022. And again, it starts 60 bucks a month in this little escrow account, collecting money for the next installment. So that's how it works. You're never double paying. People ask me, why am I paying 60 bucks a month? I just paid them for a year. You're paying $60 a month and it's collecting over the next year. So when the next 2021 to 2022 is due, the money will be there. They're not gonna front you the money. You've gotta put it in there every single month. Let that quote unquote savings account, escrow account build, and then they disperse it. So that's how that works. Any questions at all, please feel free to reach out. This is something that probably 99% of people do. They use an escrow account. With a lot of loans, you can say, hey, I don't wanna use an escrow account. And depending on the lender, with 5% down, 10% down, some lenders want more down, they'll say, you can waive escrows. You can do this all on your own. My personal opinion is I'm not sure you wanna worry about paying property taxes twice a year paying homeowners insurance once a year, writing those bills, saving the money for those bigger bills. Because really, some people's arguments, I my money, I wanna hold on to it, I wanna collect interest on it. One, the interest rates for savings right now are absolute not good. Another thing is every year they'll do an escrow analysis. And a lot of folks deal with this too. They go, what the heck is this? My mortgage went up $56 or went down $21. What happened? They do an analysis. They can't hold more than a certain amount. They can have a little bit in reserves, so a little bit of buffer, but they can't have an extra $2,500 sitting in this account. So they analyze it and say, hey, you know, based on our analysis, we might not need 528 a month, we only need 514. And, you know, it's because they had estimated property taxes to be 5,000 a year, maybe it's 4,800 and something. So they'll, they'll take a look, 514 for the next 12 months, if we collect that, are we gonna have too much? If we're gonna have too much, They'll send you a check. Here's $732. We've got too much. We're gonna adjust your mortgage payment down $14. So this total payment goes to 2030 because we've only got to collect 514 going forward. We're collecting too much. Or in the other case, which unfortunately is more common, they say, you know what? We didn't account for property taxes going up when you bought your house, which they should. This should all be set up. But you know, we've got Mel or something. Your property taxes are $6,000 a year. Now this number goes up, what they have to withhold goes up. And if there's not enough in the escrow account, what they might have to do is one, change it to start escrowing the right amount, and two, catch up for where they're behind. We weren't collecting enough. So we're gonna collect this much going forward, but to catch you up to where you should have been, escrow account wise, we're gonna collect an extra $42 for the next 12 months, something like that. Any questions on this? I know it well, and so I'm happy to answer any questions. The servicer who's collecting payments usually should be able to answer those questions on why it changed. But if you want a local professional's advice, I'm happy to help with that as well. Any questions, feel free to reach out. Matt at mattthemortgageguy.com. Shoot me an email there or give me a call or text at 916-529-7600. If you found value in this video, and sorry it was a little bit long-winded, please like, subscribe to the video. I'm trying to put out as much good content on YouTube as I can to where any and all questions that anybody ever has can be answered uh, on a video format where I can help more people than um, calls I can take. All right, thanks again, bye-bye.